When I look back on that year of getting to single figures, going from 34 to nine, there are a few things that stand out to me that worked, but there was also so much that I didn't know that I now know that I wish I knew then because I honestly think it would have helped me become a better golfer faster. So in this video, I want to share with you five things that I wish I knew sooner. And this is the video that I wish I could have watched when I was starting my golf improvement quest with my first handicap of 34, or also when I felt stuck on that journey, really feeling like I just couldn't get that breakthrough that would take me to the next level of my game. The first thing that I wish I knew sooner is to start with dry drills when you're making a swing change. So back then on my challenge, on my quest, when I was trying to improve my swing, trying to make changes to my swing, I would hit the range and just blast through buckets of balls. I would really just try so desperately for that change to click but it never felt like it actually did. And I'd watch my swing back, I'd film on my phone, watch my swing back thinking that's the one, I've cracked it, only to see that it looked exactly the same as when I started. And so now when I'm making a swing change, and I've made quite a lot since getting to single figures and meeting Jason, my coach last November, we've rebuilt my whole swing, like a full overhaul. And the way that I did that was starting with dry drills. So really finding the move that I wanted to groove and just getting the reps in really identifying that one change that I wanted to make and just repeating it over and over at home either with a club or without a club so that hopefully that feeling gets more and more familiar and it's something that I can then take with me to the range and then fingers crossed to the course. The second thing that I wish I knew sooner is to bring pressure into your practice. So as you can imagine I spent a lot of time practicing on that year trying to cut my handicap and I think it was productive. Overall, it felt productive because I was focused on the data and my love of going after that low hanging fruit. But when I look back, I think there was an ingredient missing. I didn't ever really bring in an element of practicing under pressure. So trying where possible and as much as possible to replicate that pressure we can feel when we've got one shot, one ball on the course, rather than maybe as many balls as we wish to hit in our practice. And so now I'm all about bringing in the pressure where I can with games like my knee knocker drill for putting, where I'll hit four putts around the hole from three foot, six foot and nine foot and score myself to see how many I can get out of 12. And I'll keep a track of that going back to that drill, seeing if I can improve, if I can make more of those nine footers or keep going with making those six footers, which can really make all the difference to my score when I'm on the course. And then there's my up and down game, which I love, which I'll either do in the practice area, working on my short game, or I'll actually go out on the course, drop balls in tricky spots or places where I might often find myself missing and try and get those up and down. And I'll add an element of scoring to that as well. So say if I hit three balls, I'll score myself out of three to see how many of those I can get up onto the green and then down into that hole. And this is all with the purpose of trying to replicate that feeling of wanting a certain outcome when we're standing over that shot on the course and practicing how we would play that shot while we're feeling that little bit of pressure. And you might have seen as well my three hole challenge. This is a big reason why I'm doing that challenge so that hopefully the pressure builds as the rounds go on so that in that ultimate round, that third bite of the cherry, I might really be feeling that pressure to score the best that I can and although that might feel uncomfortable and I actually want to maybe avoid that feeling of pressure and feeling a little bit nerves, I want to step into that. I want to be able to play well under that pressure in the hope that it helps me build that muscle for when maybe there's comps next year or I've got a card in my hand and I'm trying to really put a good score together. The third thing that I wish I knew sooner builds on from that feeling of practicing under pressure but this time it's all about building my bandwidth for scoring well. And the reason that I wish that I built my bandwidth for scoring well is because I cannot tell you the number of rounds that I played in that year of trying to cut my handicap, but also since, where I'd have a good run going and then something would happen. It was almost like I would self-sabotage because I wasn't comfortable scoring that well or really I'd get a little bit too focused on what might happen, how well this might end up going and then something would happen and it would just go wonky and I'd end up almost feeling like I'd thrown away a really good round. So now the way that I'm working on this is things like that three hole challenge but also really trying to use this winter to get braver with my shot choices, to get comfortable scoring well by going out 
practicing on my own or playing with friends and just trying to stitch a score together, still bringing that element of wanting to score well, even though the conditions aren't the best, I'm doing it more to work on my mindset and build that bandwidth for being able to score well so that when we get to the spring, hopefully, that familiarity of being able to stitch a good score together and not want to blow it up is there so that when I've got that good round going, rather than panic and feel like I'm out of, out of my comfort zone and therefore do something that sort of self-sabotages that, instead I can press on and maybe make it my best score yet. And the fourth thing that I wish I knew sooner is to go out and purposefully practice those tricky shots. I now love doing this. I love going out on the course, say if I've got 30 minutes to practice or even an hour, rather than just go to the range or go to the short game area where the shots that we can play are somewhat limited, like we can't always replicate those tricky shots on the range like we can on the course. So I'll purposefully go out and drop balls in the tricky spots that I might find myself in. So maybe this is off a bare lie, trying to chip off a bare lie or a little pitch shot over a bunker, maybe it's going to a tight pin or even actually punching out from the trees. I'll now go out to purposefully experiment playing with those shots and seeing what would I do if I was to find myself in this spot when I had a good score going or when I was playing for real rather than just out there practicing. And the final thing that I wish I knew, number five, is to practice pressing on rather than panicking after you've had a bad hole. Now this again, it builds on the scoring mindset and building that bandwidth for scoring well. But when I was on that quest of getting down to single figures, if I had a bad hole, it would throw me. Like I'd be so panicked about the fact that my score was running away from me or that I just hadn't played that hole well. I'd be kicking myself about the choices I'd made or the mistakes that had happened. And it never ended well. It always meant that that card, either I'd written it off in my mind or I was so focused on what had happened that really all that would do is just unravel the rest of my round. It wouldn't allow me to get myself back on track and just keep playing as I had been before that bad hole. And it was so frustrating because it could have been that one hole that then had that ripple effect through the rest of my round. And that's why now I'm really focused on building my bounce back ability because those bad holes are gonna happen. But I know now it's what I choose to do after that bad hole that's gonna either have that positive or negative ripple effect through the rest of my round. And this was really brought home to me recently when actually I broke 80 for the first time, which I was so happy about. I'd been trying to break through that barrier for ages and I kept coming close, shooting maybe 81, 82, leaking a couple of shots or even actually going really wonky and ending up wondering if I can play golf at all. But I managed to rein it back in and I was level par through five holes until on that sixth hole, of course, I ended up sending a drive into the woods. So a provisional off the tee later, that unraveled to a triple bogey. But the difference this time, past Jess, Jess on that year of getting to single figures would have been thrown by that, thrown by suddenly going from level to three over, thinking that that was it, that that was now gonna be the rest of the round. But for some reason, this time it happened a little bit differently. I remember thinking to myself, I'm gonna get those shots back. There was something about the challenge of it. I actually felt excited, which I know sounds weird, but I actually felt excited to challenge myself to chase those shots down or at least steady the ship rather than let that eight be the tone of the rest of my round and let it unravel rather than let me close it out and keep pushing. And so if you'd said to me, what would my first round in the 70s look like? I definitely wouldn't have said that it would have a triple and two doubles, but it did. But it also had four birdies because in that challenge of trying to get those shots back, I got bolder. I got more confident to try and take those shots on and score as well as I could, not letting that eight be the thing that I would beat myself up for, but instead be the thing that I would use to bounce back and try where possible to get the best score that I could. So those are the five things that I wish I knew sooner and the five things that I'm focused on now to keep building myself into the best golfer that I can be. And I would love to hear what's one thing that you wish you knew sooner on your golf journey. Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you there.